Okay, today we're continuing on with chapter 8, working on factoring. Um, today we're going to be talking about a special kind of polynomial and how we can factor it. And this is one that as you continue moving on in math, as we learn these special little situations and patterns that we can catch on to, it'll be really important to be able to remember these because it can make things a lot easier as we go on. So the special kind of polynomial we're talking about today is called a difference of squares. So when we talked about foiling, I'm going to go ahead and talk about that first. We had, we learned that if we do a plus b times a minus b, meaning that a and b are the same term, so our a's in both of them are the same and our b's are the same, the only difference is that one has addition and one has subtraction. We took that, and when we foiled, we got x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 4, which then when we combined like terms, negative 2x plus 2x canceled, and we were left with x squared minus 4, which if you think about that, that's your a term squared minus your b term squared. So today we're going to be taking that but working backwards. So we would be given x squared minus 4 and instead of factoring or instead of given the two binomials and foiling them we're given the binomial x squared minus 4 and we know that we can factor that into the difference of squares. So in order to factor using a difference of squares, what we need to look for is that a and b in your difference of squares both have to be perfect squares. So an example of one of these could be x squared minus 36. If we were asked to factor this, we know that x squared is a perfect square, so our a term would be the square root of that, which is x. Our b term 36 is a perfect square, so our b term would be the square root of 36, which is 6. So the factored form would be x minus 6 times x plus 6. So today as you're doing these, when you're working with um, difference of squares, there's really not a lot of work to be shown besides maybe just showing what your a and b values are going to be and then factoring it into your two binomials. So let's go ahead and get into some more examples here. This first one, n squared minus 25. So again, the first thing you want to do is you always want to check to make sure that both of your terms are perfect squares, because if they're not, then we can't use this pattern. So we always want to start by figuring out what our a and b are going to be, which if they're perfect squares, it's just going to be the square root of your two terms. So n squared, the square root is n, 25, the square root is 5. So our factored form would be n plus 5 times n minus 5. It doesn't matter which one you put first. You could have n minus 5 times n plus 5. That would still work as your answer. Moving down to the next one, 64g squared minus 16h squared. So let's go ahead and check and make sure we can get perfect square answers out of this. So the square root of 64 is 8, square root of g squared is g, square root of 16 is 4, square root of h squared is h. So this is a difference of two squares. We would have a plus b times a minus b, so 8g plus 4h times 8g minus 4h. Again, that's all you have to do on these. This is why it can be really helpful to remember these, these tricks and these patterns, because then we don't have to go through and do all of our x method or our factoring by grouping. We just know, oh, those are two squares, it's a difference, so we can go ahead and do this. Now again, this is a difference of two squares, so it only works if we have subtraction in the middle, not addition. Last one here. If we look at this, 
9x cubed and 4x. 9 and 4 are perfect squares, but x cubed and x are not perfect squares. We can't take the square root of x cubed and get a whole number or a variable. But what we can do, again, what I talked about on our last lesson, always check to make sure if there's a common factor that can be taken out before you start. In this case, we can factor an x out of both of these terms, and we would be left with 9x squared minus 4. So now that we've done that, if we think of 9x squared minus 4, 9x squared, the square root is 3x, 4, the square root is 2. So now we still need to bring this x down. And then 9x squared minus 4 would factor into 3x minus 2 times 3x plus 2. So sometimes it might not look like a perfect square right off the bat, but if you work it through, you can end up using the difference of two squares rule here. So now applying a factoring technique more than once. If we look at x to the fourth minus 81, x to the fourth is a perfect square. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. Square root of 81 is 9. So this can factor into x squared plus 9 times x squared minus 9. So it would be easy now to look at this and say, OK, I factored it. We're done. But if we look at this, we have another difference of squares. Here we have x squared minus 9. Those are both perfect squares. Our a term would be x. Our b term would be 3. So again, we need to drop this x squared plus 9 down. And then x squared minus 9 would factor into x plus 3 times x minus 3. And that would be our simplest form of that answer. Now again, x squared plus 9, we could look at that and say, well, those are both perfect squares. We can do it there. But remember, it has to be a difference of two squares. This rule does not work if it's addition. Let's do one more. 4a to the fourth minus 4b to the fourth. So looking at this one, Again, the first thing you always want to do is see if there's a common factor that can be taken out of this. We can factor a 4 out of both of these, which would give us 4 times a to the 4th minus b to the 4th. Now we want to look at this. It's a difference. a to the 4th and b to the 4th are both perfect squares. So a would be a squared. b would be b squared. So we would have 4, again we need to drop that down, times a squared plus b squared, times a squared minus b squared. Now again, we have a difference of two squares there. So in this case, a would be a, b would be b. So we would bring down our 4 times a squared plus b squared. And a squared minus b squared would be a plus b times a minus b. And that is our simplest form there. So then the last thing we're going to do here, so we've learned how to find that fact or how to do the factoring with a difference of squares. We learned how to do it more than once if we needed to. Now the last thing we're going to do is applying several different factoring techniques. So we're going to talk about all of the different factoring techniques we've learned so far, and we're going to use multiple in one problem. So here, 5x cubed plus 15x squared minus 5x minus 15. Again, first thing we always want to do, check and see if there's something that we can factor out from the beginning. 5 goes into all of these. So if we factor out a 5, we're left with x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 3. <coughs> so 
I've done one type of factoring so far, which is taking out a common factor. Now I've got four terms left in my polynomial. We learned in order to factor a polynomial with four terms, we factor by grouping. So I'm going to go ahead and group those values together. So I've still got my 5 there. My first group, I can factor out an x squared, which leaves me with x plus 3. My second group, I want to be left with addition at the end, which means since it's subtraction now, I need to factor out a negative number. In this case, the only thing I can factor out is a 1. But when I factor out a negative 1, it changes my signs. So I'm left with x plus 3. So now, again, still need to keep that 5 on the outside. Anything you've factored out needs to follow down. So now, factoring by grouping, we put the, thing, the terms outside the parentheses as one binomial. So x squared minus 1. And then the terms inside the parentheses as another binomial. So x plus 3. <clears throat> now, before you just say there's our answer, let's take a look at this. We've taken out a common factor. We've factored by grouping. Now if we look at these two, <clears throat> x squared minus 1. x squared and 1 are both perfect squares. We're subtracting. So this would be a difference of squares, which means we can still factor this further. Our a value would be x. Our b value would be 1. So again, we bring that 5 down. x squared minus 1 becomes x plus 1 times x minus 1. And we need to bring down our x plus 3. And now, after factoring 1, 2, 3 different ways, we finally have our final solution. 5 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 3. If we were to FOIL all of these together, multiply it by 5, we would come back out with our original polynomial. Let's do one more of these examples, and then that's going to be our lesson for today. So first, is there a factor that we can take out of this right off the bat? In this case, there is not. There's no number or variable that goes into every one of those terms. So since it's four terms, oh, since we have four terms here, I'm going to go ahead and start off by factoring using grouping. So our first one, 2x cubed plus x squared, we can take an x squared out of that. We're left with 2x plus 1. Again, here, since it's a subtraction, it needs to be addition in the end. We need to take out a negative. And here we can factor out 25. Since we took out a negative 25, we're going to change the signs. So we're left with 2x plus 1. Then putting our groups together, x squared minus 25 times 2x plus 1. Then looking at this, x squared minus 25, both terms are perfect squares. It's a difference, so we can use our rule from today. Our a value will be x, b value will be 5. So that'll be x plus 5 times x minus 5 times 2x plus 1. And that is factored as far as it can go. So that's what you guys are doing today. There's your assignment, pretty short assignment here. This will be due on Tuesday. Um, again, make sure you guys are getting these turned in on Google Classroom. And for the most part, you guys are doing an awesome job. Keep up the work. Um, I'll be getting some information out to you guys in the next few weeks about what the final will be looking like, if there's anything you need to do pre to prepare for that. Um, but until then, just keep on plugging along and finish the year strong here.